Ian, let me welcome here in Székesfehérvár. You were here uh, in Hungary only one time. This is the second, and uh, how do you like it? Have you uh, had any uh, chance or time to look around in the city, maybe? Yeah, well, the nature of the game, very little time, you know, you sort of come in, hotel, gig, plane, next place. Um, we had a little, little bit of time last night to... Um, you know, to, to walk around the streets and get a really nice dinner, you know. So what a beautiful city you have here, you know. I think we've been here three or four times now over the years. Four? Yeah. Oh, I wasn't aware. At least three. At least three. I oh, know we've been here. <laughs> I checked your tour uh, dates and I saw that you have many, many shows. You go to another country every day. How can you manage this and uh, how can you be uh, so energetic and powerful on stage with such pressure? Well, it, it, I don't know, it comes with uh, experience, probably, you know. I mean, we've been doing it for 40 years, so um, there's not a great deal of pressure on it. Sometimes uh, there's the pressure of time, um, getting to uh, the next gig on, on time and stuff like that. Sometimes we have to get up early in the morning. After playing late at night, you know, sometimes that's a bit of a bind. Um, but it's just something we've done, you know, for the past 40 years, so um, we don't really feel that much pressure anymore, you know. <laughs> We, uh, we, 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 we're well used to it. <laughs> I agree, so you mentioned 40 years, but it's actually 45 uh, right now. Um, what was it uh, to go uh, on a show at the beginning, your first uh, shows, first gigs, and how, the, how does it feel uh, today? Oh, the first show? Um, yeah, it was Essington Working Men's Club, I think. That was in 1971, March. And I think there must have been about 15 people there. <laughs> I mean, nobody knew us, you know, so it, we, it was new to everyone. But it was uh, it was great to get up on stage and actually play in front of people, you know, which we'd been rehearsing for about 18 months, um, getting a new new repertoire together, you know, uh, not just doing other people's songs, but writing some of our own stuff as well. And it was just such a pleasure and just a relief to get up there and actually play a gig in front of people, you know. Um, these days, it's also a pleasure to get up on stage and play the material in front of people, you know. And we're thankful we're still able to do it after all these years, you know. Um, people still want us, we still enjoy it, you know. So, uh, yeah, it's just a, still a great pleasure after all of these years. Oh, it's good to hear. And uh, how did your um, work change uh, during uh, the time as technology developed since you have internet, computers, anything else? Uh, is it easier or makes it more complicated maybe? It definitely makes it more complicated. Um, of course, well, yeah, I mean, you, there's all different factions that to take into account now. It's not, you know, the internet, there's, there's YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, you, you know, all these different facets, you know, you have to cater to all of them really. You know, so that makes it a little bit more complicated. Um, the, the internet is good and evil in equal measures, you know. As soon as you have a product to, to, to offer, um, it's, it's instantly available to anybody with a computer, you know. It's just that simple. It's also instantly available to anybody who wants to steal it off one of the pirate sites. So, um, it's like I say, it's good and bad. Um, I mean, when, when we first started out, you had a record player. And that was it, you know. And you 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 anticipated your favourite band's album coming out. You waited for weeks for it, and uh, you know you went to your local radio uh, record st uh, store, uh, you know, yeah. grabbed it, rushed home with it, and put it on your little mono <laughs> record player, and away it went. You know, these days, you know, obviously, you know, the media is endless, uh, and, and the business has changed. Um, to to that same degree as well, you know. Uh, Judas Priest is a very definitive band in uh, heavy metal history. Uh, but now I'm uh, asking about the clothing. Where from came this? Uh, the leather, the uh, pins, and so on. So, how did this came instead of the 70s spandex? Well, it's sort of it evolved. You know, the whole thing evolved. Heavy metal didn't happen overnight. You know. It's something that, that happened over a over, um, period of time. I think probably everything gelled probably around British Steel. When, when the musical direction was, was established and, and the image was sort of getting established. I mean, the image started, I think Rob showed up in a leather coat one day, you know, and I thought oh, that was pretty cool. You know, so we'll, yeah, 
goes well with the music, so we started to wear leather, and it just it was that simple. Really, was that simple. I read an article yesterday uh, about Judas Priest uh, asking Hungarian musicians, and there was a very good question that uh, it sounded like, um, "What did? Uh, what do you think? What is the greatest contribution of Priest to heavy metal? What do you think is the greatest contribution to heavy metal from you?" We probably kept at it, you know. Um, I mean, in the 70s there, the mid 70s or the late 70s, a, a lot of the established bands sort of pulled up there. You know, they stopped. Zeppelin stopped. Sabbath stopped touring. Deep Purple stopped touring. You know, and there's only really us that, that carried the flag there for about five years. Whoa. You know, and, and after that, the, the, the new wave of metal came along. You know, Maiden, Leopard, you know, the ACDC, if you like. Although they've probably been going as long as we have. And it sort of it got a bit of a momentum, you know, and that that was a time of punk rock as well, and everybody was sort of afraid that punk rock was going to take over and kill metal dead, you know. But uh, we carried on, and that's probably you know one of our greatest attributes was we kept on when when everybody else, I mean they didn't stop for any other reason. They probably wanted to rest, you know. They've been going for a long time then. But, uh, yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> when you're not making your own music and you're on the road, uh, who do you listen to? Who are the favorites or? Uh, the best you like to listen? I still like the old traditional bands that I've been listening to for the past 40 years, you know. If I got marooned on a desert island, I'd take Cream and Hendrix and John Mayle, you know, and Purple and Sabbath and, you know, all those bands. And um, if I'm on my own, I'm going to listen to something. That's generally what I listen to, you know. Yeah, thank you very much, Ian. Have a great show. Thank and you. we're glad to have you here. <laughs> thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Anytime. It's our pleasure.